Thanks, Francis. Thanks for coming for the brown bag. Just go straight. So these are the objectives. I will not talk about it at length. This is the outline of the presentation. So I will go straight to the concept. So because you know, as a senior specialist in MOE, sometimes there's this talk about how we are always connected to other specialists in the horizontal plane where you know the vertical plane is where all the branch head uh, directors so we operate within the horizontal plane and uh, it is best if we can align what we do to certain uh, vertical directions I just like to say that the, the concept and development of this EJSS app share these six points with you which, because I think they are, they are useful in the course of our work so sometimes we may want to take note. I will explain these six steps. I also like to point out that this is very similar to the specialist professional development idea of self-initiated activities to develop competencies. So even though this is not specifically for specialists, but I think any living person should try to initiate some level of uh, self-initiated activities to constantly learn. So the first thing is how, how did we uh, come about this data analytics is because in 2018, uh, we had a branch head and the branch head did a text scan. So there were a couple of uh, initiatives. In the next foreseeable future, AI, Internet of Things and data analytics are the three areas of growth where ad tech will play a, a big role. So uh, that is where I think it is uh, very important to get directions from the from the branch head and the div directors. So since in 2018, ETD had this particular uh, tech scan, what we can do. So AI model, it is difficult to train. It is actually a very expensive way to, to train the large language models. Internet of Things is like those sensors you have on the in school, then you can sense the temperature of the surrounding, pH level of water. So these are really, I thought, very well done by Arduinos and other sensor-like devices. So data analytics was the, was the only thing left on the plate among the three areas of growth. So data analytics is relatively inexpensive and it seems like a natural fit of what I was doing, which is uh, one of my realization is to create in practice. Uh, the other one is video analysis for physics education. So data analytics is aligned to that at that point in time, my branch goals. Okay, then of course you mean you also need to also cannot suddenly because uh, you know, with this area, then you suddenly you want to dwell into those areas. I mean, I'm, I'm a specialist, but I'm not able to suddenly change field and, and do all the uh, amazing stuff that some people are doing. So I recommend that during the concept of this, doing any work, you need to build on your existing capabilities. Because I've already been doing uh, interactive since 2011, and then it, from one project with school led on to another, which I also did with school. Then uh, there was a NIE project, which we talk about learning communities, but it's also revolving around my body of work. And this one is talking about um, interactive textbooks, virtual labs, uh, then I did SSTRF for math. And from this story of projects, you can see that doing data analytics will be a natural fit. So you need to build on your capabilities. And then, of course, for anything to work, you need to have funding source. So this is very important because as senior specialists, we have this thing called the Senior Specialist Track Research Fund. So it is available fund to us. So I would recommend if you are a specialist, do explore this fund can be quite easily approved. Anything higher than that, of course, requires more levels of uh, clearance. If you have tapped on certain other funds, then you can, of course, look at these other areas of funds, which I know is available to us. Because the funding can help us to uh, get the experts. And some sometimes we also cannot, cannot be doing all the coding and all that. So sometimes having interns or temp staff to help us will be very important. When we had this idea, the the SLS product owner uh, spoke to me. So actually, he wanted this to be to be to be done. So he checked with me whether this is possible. So I it is important to always talk to your product is to is to talk to SLS using the easy JavaScript simulation. So you need to talk to the partners. Now. This professor, Felix, he is the person that I spoke to. He is a comm science professor. So it is always good to talk to people who are outside the field. So because this is about computer science, 
having a, a computer science professor to help in this endeavor will be very useful. Moreover, he is the creator of the Easy JavaScript Authoring Toolkit. So it makes the perfect sense like, to get him and help if you want to do anything regarding EGSS. Okay, then, of course, uh, network with stakeholders. So what happened is when we proposed this project, we realized that if you don't immerse yourself uh, inside these work streams, uh, there is no way you can learn about SRS. While I was in ETD, I was doing a classroom of the future. I recommend uh, to ease the learning curve, uh, immerse yourself into that particular work stream. So that's why I was in SRS for two years. When the Professor Felix come to Singapore, then because I really have built one year or two years of uh, friendship, I get to know all the inside out of SLS. So it becomes easier. Uh, so this is another aspect of networking, which I thought is key. An example of what we are doing today, we have also gone to the A-level physics and O-level physics yeah, unit meeting to share with them some of this work that we are doing and then express interest to bring this to the next step. Lah. So we, we help them to create interactives to put inside the app. And we also did a sharing, uh, Darren Tan and me, we did a sharing with the science unit meeting to see the ideas and then we see what's the response like. So I will quickly go through the uh, demonstration. Uh, I will just go through the embedding part. So this, this app actually works inside SLS. So you can see the interface. This is an SLS embedding app interface. So when you need to do this, uh, you just choose the correct screen and then you just copy this, paste it inside the resource URL and click save. Okay, uh, more details you can refer to Annex A. This is the way SLS want to talk to apps. So you just need to uh, key in all this and then it will uh, automatically be inside the classroom assignment. The student will see the simulation as it is designed. Okay, so the student need to drag the first animal to the prompted question. Okay, and all that. So again, you can look at the different annexes. I will not dwell too much on this. Later, I'll do a demo. Then in the teacher's view, sometimes you click on this teacher view. Then if you mouse over the correspondent marks, you can see the history of the student interaction. So let me just help you to orientate. This one means this is question two. The question, because it's randomly generated by the simulation, so I need a system of creating the correct task to allow the teacher to see. So the task automatically generated by the simulation, because this can be randomly generated. So the cow is fixed, but the four square and what direction is, is randomly generated. So the student move it south by five squares and then three squares. So eventually the student got it correct. Again, uh, I'd like to refer you to the annex if you are interested in the blow by blow of these screens. I will click on the demo. For example, when it is a teacher's view, you can see that the teacher will have this little button. Click on it and there will be this analytics of all the history of students interacting with every question. So a name, this is exactly designed according to the SLS monitoring page. So it shares the same uh, design features because we wanted to make things simple for the teacher. So if they've been using SLS diligently, then this will be a natural extension of what the monitoring page can do. Let me just quickly do a, a very stalo demonstration. So I will just switch role like SLS. Uh, this system can also allow you to change to a role. I'll change a role to my to a student. Okay. So every time you click reset, it actually asks you a different question, which is my point. La. The simulation handles the randomness in order to make the task not always so boring and unpredictable. So let's say, for example, move the mouse five square is. So uh, five square is. So do you want me to get it correct or get it wrong? Any participation from the audience? Get it wrong. Okay. Where do you want me to land? If you want to, me to get it wrong, where do you want me to land? What is the system? I mean, like, this is zero, zero, right? So this is uh, one comma, two comma, zero. So what, where do you want me to land? Maybe west five? Same Where, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So you, you got it wrong. Okay. Then the simulation will automatically prompt the, the student like a normal interactive that, you know, try again. Okay. Then, so it doesn't give you, so what was the next move if you realize that this is wrong? What, what would the student likely click? Right. Opposite oh. direction. So assuming that I, I let, I drop it here. Okay. I drop it here. Okay. So you got it correct. Right. So okay. remember, we got it wrong. Then we got it right. Huh? Okay. okay. I do one more uh, animal. Okay, which is the cow. So the cow says move four square northwest, or you want me to continue to get it wrong? I'm trying to get it wrong. Okay, get it wrong. Okay. 
then eventually I can get it right. Huh? You remember this string of records? Okay, now let me replicate the screen. I now change row back as a teacher. So remember, the student don't see the analytics. It's the same as in SLS. So this is now the teacher account. I'm logged in as the teacher account. I can see. So what do you expect to see? is there's this student because I changed role. I change, remember I changed role. This account is called Lawrence Wee. Yeah? Okay. So this is my, I'm online currently because it's blue color. The task is incomplete because I didn't complete it okay, because of this I here. Now, why is it, it is one mark? Because I got it correct, not the first try. And if you look at the numbers, minus five comma zero with the cross, you remember I moved the mouse to the West for the first task. You remember or not? Then eventually I got it correct, which is five comma zero. Are you impressed already? <laughs> because whatever that I have been doing as a student account has now translated to something the teacher can make meaning of. You can leave this session with the impression that the analytics is not only powerful, it is accurate. There's very little chance for it to go wrong because it's all computer science. Okay. Now this one, you remember I what did I do? A bit difficult to remember now, huh? but uh, I I try to jog your memories, huh? First, I move uh, north, west, three grids each. Then I continue to prompt. Then I said, okay, let's get it wrong again. So I move five grids, north, west, correct? Then after that, eventually I get correct. So everything is locked. And then I stop here. So therefore, there are no data over here. I hope this simple demonstration shows you that it is actually working. Okay, we have managed to do it for this particular compass simulation. But if you, let's say you have something in your mind, uh, in your curriculum work, in your MOA library, you have certain simulations that you, you think it will benefit from having such analytics, okay, then you can uh, reach out to me and Darren Tan, and then we can see how we can move your idea forward. Okay? Yeah, Lawrence, there's a question. Uh, yeah. I think yeah. is the dashboard showing the student's response housed in the external model server? Oh, oh. okay, good question. Okay. So pretend that this is SLS. Everything uh, will appear seamlessly. The experience is as if like you're in SLS. So this is another simulation, but this is the start from the next an animal. But the idea is simply the... What you need to do is if you have, later I'll pass you the deck of slide, you can get the interactives after we've added it for you, then you can self-help and add yourself. Assign this as a classroom assignment to your student. When you log in, you will see this. And then because no student have come in yet, therefore you see uh, no data. Okay? But if the student were to log in, they will not see this. And then they will drag, they will do all the interaction, they will, you know, they will do all the answers. All this back end will be captured. And then when you see the data, it will be as if you're in SLS. So to, to make a long story short, the experience for the teacher and a student is completely according to the SLS design, which is, it gives the appearance of everything working in SLS. I hope that answered the question. <laughs> it is connecting out to external website. But if you were to click on this link here, you can check the URL. Uh, yeah, it's actually connecting to my app. But if you are doing everything here, is the experience is as if like you're in SLS. I, I just like to stress a point that this is exactly what the SLS allows for. I didn't do anything illegal. This is exactly how external apps are supposed to bring the student out, jump out without having to log in. So I get I get all their information, their data, their login, and then I get them to interact with the simulation. I pass I. Ideally, I should be able to pass the information back, but currently it's only shown as a dashboard. Okay, should, should I? I can't. I can't. Oh, let me see. Uh, oh, there's a lot of questions. Uh. Get it wrong. Very good for teacher to know. Yeah, correct. It's so far the, the one of the reasons why uh, I think uh, Cheryl asked. Yeah, is we designed this because yes, in part it is part of my conceptualization, but also it's also grounded on teacher. We I check with teacher, then they say yeah, yeah, it sounds like a good thing because SLS can't do this. At this point in time, so we built the feature. Uh, we have gotten approval to get this added to the SLS production. So by maybe December, this will be available for everyone to use. Is this or for analytic for interactive? And then we can do analytics. Is it only for interactive? Yeah, yeah, yes. It's only for interactive because if it's for a normal SLS quiz, then the SLS the SLS monitoring page would be able to do that. You know, the when you give an assignment out. Then you have this teacher monitor, right? Then you click on it. So if it's a normal interactive dashboard, if it's a normal quiz, this all will be done already by SF natively, all right? But for interactive, 
the teacher in SLS classroom assignment have no idea what the student did in the, in the interactive. This app addresses that concern. We now tell the teacher what exactly the student is doing. I think I finished all the questions, I think. Oh. Uh, there's one, uh, I think it's about the Prof. Felix, right? I think she need ask, can you clarify, did you pay Prof. Felix of uh, e -S -S -E -G -S -S so that he... I... So this is an earlier question. Can you clarify, did you pay Prof. Felix so that he prioritized development of your request. Oh, okay, I got this developed under the Senior Specialist Track Research Fund. So me and Darren and Gerald, we got money. It was downloaded to ETD. So using the using DC, direct contracting, I have to justify that Prof. Felix is the only expert in this whole world that can do it in 20 days. And I sent this email out to Director at Tech. And then uh, he asked some question. Eventually, he, he recognized that the only way to do it is he had, we have to pay Prof. Felix to come to Singapore for 20 days to do it. Because initially, they wanted it to be done on Zoom. Lah. So I emphasized the, the difficulty of doing anything that critical uh, on the online space. So does that... So did he prioritize? He was here for 20 days. So obviously, he has to prioritize. He's doing it while he's in Singapore. Ken, so I... I have uh, finished the demo. Let me continue with the rest of the deck. So newly introduced EGSS. So because this app was produced in last year uh, around October, then uh, I came to it. I came to CBCD again. I emphasize the point about embedding I know if you want this app to succeed, some sometimes it's not really that easy like if I were to sit in ETD and then tell a Darren hey, you do this you do that so one of one strategy would be to embed yourself inside the, the stream of work like, so that you see, so you know the difficulty you talk to the people people understand that you're coming from uh, from this particular perspective they will try to help you rather than they, they see as being like you know you, you don't want to do then you ask me to do so uh, I think it's a lot of there's a lot of trust la, if you can immerse yourself in that piece of work, then you can see things from other people's perspective. So it's easier to move things. Okay, so these interactives were introduced recently within this year, okay, while I was in uh, CBDD. So we did some sharing, then I tried to move the screen. Okay, so this one, during the A-level physics and O-level physics uh, unit meeting, there were about eight of us. Then me and Darren, we share with the physics folks. So I think eventually... The general sensing was everybody was quite impressed with what it was able to do, like the audience here. But they say, okay, maybe how difficult it is to, to do something like this, you know, or how much would it take? So the idea was somebody, I can't remember exactly who, someone said that it might be worth testing this out if it was a projectile game. So uh, those of us who have been here quite long, and you will know that there's this guy called Zi Guang, he's CBDD Physics A-level. So he made an original game of a, of a frog. Okay, so we, we customize it. We, we revamp the code inside to make it into a frog to jump onto a dragonfly. And then we added different stages according to Darren's uh, Tan's uh, requirement. He, he specified that we try to break it down where we only change one thing, change the other thing, you know, then and all that. Lah. So eventually we've craft out the analytics and then it is working. Okay, so do you want to see the game or you want me to move on? Okay, that we see. Do we have time? <laughs> okay, okay, we have some time. Huh? So this is the game. The, the interface looks like this but in SLS it will be completely seamless see why am I in this screen huh? oh because I okay I need to lock out as this student these are uh, these are fake I need to give me a minute huh? okay, okay. physics projectile game okay. okay let's see again okay so uh, you need to change role to a student then because as a teacher I, I would not record all your information I will only record the student the data is tagged to the student's name so now as a student, we design it such that you can select the stage. So the first goal is to help the hungry frog reach the dragonfly through a series of mathematical calculations. Okay, so the student will check, okay, 0, 10. Okay, then I'll use my, my, my mathematics calculator and then I'll check the answer. Okay, so I, after I calculate, then I, I know the answer. I click, the frog jumps, it lands time. All right. Then I will tell the student to choose the second stage, another stage. So I move on to another stage. Okay. So every time you change a stage, the dragonfly position changes. 
And, uh, and the difficulty was earlier on, we tested the student on changing of the velocity. So if you click, if I click reset, uh, you can see the dragonfly changes position. So I'm supposed to mouse over here, look at the coordinates, do my mathematical calculation that like I do for a, for a level physics student. And then I will adjust the, I will calculate and then find out the answer and then I'll check. Okay, so may, maybe after checking, I think the answer is nine. We program it such that it's wrong. It's, the frog gets stuck there showing that it's wrong. And then two seconds later, we move it back. So let's say, I do not know whether it's correct or not. Okay, it's still wrong. Maybe 10 point. Okay, so he eventually gets the frog. Correct. So, okay. So stage, stage zero, correct first time. Go back to the teacher's view. Okay. Look for the account called Lawrence because this is Lawrence. And then you can see, okay. Did I get it correct the first time? So the task, the correct answer is the velocity is 10.6 and the angle is 59.7. So the student changed magnitude of the velocity to 10.6. So correct. First time correct, two marks. He first, he got, he chose nine. For the velocity, then after the magnitude of the velocity, 9.9, .9, got it wrong again. Because the answer is actually 10.2. You can see the, the top line, 10.2, uh, and the angle is 61.8. That's the correct answer. That's randomly generated by the simulation. Because SLS can't randomly generate, right? So you can see the value of having interactives inside SLS. Because it, it actually augments the functionality of what SLS cannot do. So eventually, I put in 10.3, and the angle was 20, and then it got the answer correct. So through this analytics, you will be wondering how come this one is, is there? Because these were the previous attempts. I, I locked in before and then these are, if I do stage two, then this data will be erased away. You follow or not like that, it will be erased away. So in other words, if a teacher, very skillful, the teacher show the student, oh, your, this is your score. The student, if he's motivated enough and gave me a gamer at heart, he will see his score seven. Then he say, oh, I cannot. Then I'm going to redo all those I get wrong. So in, in other words, what I'm trying to share with you is if the teacher show this interface, there is a chance uh, that the, the gamified element of how we do the scoring will actually encourage students to come in and retry again. Uh. Oh, this, this is my second time online and then the task is completed. So I can keep retrying and retrying until I get uh, 10 out of 10. So this is a frog uh, and then it was easily made Luckily, because I'm in CBD now, so with Darren's uh, help, we managed to get this out. Lah. We, we wanted to illustrate how easy it was. I mean, reskin this. Reskin means we change the background, we change the frog to a shop put person. Then instead of the instead of the frog flying, it's the ball flying. And then you now we put a target here. So we reskin this to demonstrate. And then, of course, we have to change the certain words, like our sportsman, because previously it was help the frog. Lah then it will be a complete mismatch because you need to reskin and also reword it uh, to in order for it to make sense. So this was previously Dragonfly. This was, you know, they have to change the words. If you have made this, or if somebody have made this in EJSS, it will be quite easy uh, for us to scale this to another subject that capitalizes it at the game mechanics. And you can talk to us to see whether you can inject the subject domain that you may want. Because we are using this as a precise gaming engine for them to do punching the calculator, write down the solution, and then key in here to check. But maybe you have a different idea. Maybe you want them to hit, then make correct, then answer some question in chemistry, <laughs> answer some question in English. You know, it could be many possibilities. So I want to leave you with this idea that it is actually quite scalable. Once the initial model has been made it becomes slightly easier to then repurpose it for other subjects. This is another work that we did. So the ETD folks, they, they are from the classroom of the future group. Then they, they asked me because they hit a stumbling block. They had this survey. They need to copy and paste manually. So then uh, DET will ask, how sure are we that the student copy and paste integ with integrity that this is indeed their area that they need to work on. So therefore, the COTF team, they approached me and said, can, can they harness what I have done and then allow the teacher to see without the need for the student to key in. Just allow the teacher to just mouse over and see what are the areas of improvement so that the appropriate intervention can be recommended to the student to develop his or her 21st century competencies. So I thought 
yeah, it's a it's a good idea. So luckily, the colleagues in ETD she helped. She asked whether this can be done or not. So I helped her. It took about a, a month or so to to get it out. So again, I like to share this story because it has a it's a very, very targeted purpose. Lah. I also want to make sure that I do not leave any stone unturned. Lah. That somehow somebody in CBDD can still say, oh, actually I, I do know there's there's this thing. So. Actually, it is possible. You just need to talk uh, to Darren or me, then we can uh, orientate you and see whether we can explore making your own EJSS interactive to put inside MOE library lessons. If there is an interactive, we will not replace it, but we will create an alternative path for which then the teacher can then decide whether I want to use this powerful analytics or if I just want to use it like a normal interactive, which is also, I think is, is the correct uh, decision give teachers the, the choice rather than forcing them to use these interactives with data analytics. So in, our, in, in other words, uh, this is a data analytics project, right? So actually before all that, uh, people like us, we have been using this idea of a log to store the data. So if you look at this interactive, you can see that actually there's a log. Move the mouse one square, okay? And then the coordinates. So if you look at this, it's like a computational block of code that you copy. So if the log is not equal to a blank, then I would like to add the lock and uh, add on to the next line. That means this is how I create the illusion of it moving down. Because if it is not blank, then I would like it to record. That means if this is not blank in the next line, uh, in this particular next line manner, if not, it will be all in one string and it's very hard to read. And then followed by the lock itself, which adds on to itself with the cross or tick. And then plus the question is a variable, which is this variable here. And then coordinates is this coordinates here. So I just want to sh share that actually it is possible to do uh, logging on data, but this data analytics is, is a, a whole new level you can see on the dashboard. So over here, we also have another one. So you can see, okay, uh, it's uh, for students to kind of like... Uh... Okay, so these are all the references uh, for the talk. Okay, so this one, I think I will not go through, but the annex is for you to read lah, or for you to see how all these are done step by step. Lah. So I'm giving you... Later on, I'll give Suhana and uh, Francis the deck and then it, she, they can cascade this down to you guys. Okay. So uh, with that, I think I will end uh, the session. We'll call you a day. Have a, have a good weekend. Thank you. Thanks, Lawrence. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.